Yo, what up, my friends? We're back for some more drafting here on Arena. Sorry, on Magic Online. We got some more Vintage Cube. I'm Kenji, Numat the Yagashira. You know what time it is. It's time to draft. It's time to draft some sweet decks here in the Vintage Cube. What do we want to do? Lots of different routes you can go. We didn't open any power, as you often don't do. But I think we have, like, a pretty good Demir Signet if we want to just take that. Renin 6 would be fa fine. A couple of black red lands. Sphinx is good. What do I feel like doing? I don't know. Demir Signet also just keeps us the most open, I suppose. It's nice to swap things up every once in a while. I think we've done a bunch of, like, reanimator and aggro as of late. Maybe we just take Demir Signet. We see what happens from there. Second choice, second pick of the first pack. Force of Will's fantastic. Couple of fetches are always good. Ledger Shredder, honestly not bad. Sneak Attack is a fun one. I think we've done a bit of sneaking recently. Um, hmm. I think a lot of the times, and I say this often, Vintage Cube is just about what you want to be doing at the time, right? I mean, there are so many different powerful strategies, powerful cards, that sometimes it's just good to to play what you want to play. Uh, so if we wanted to just second pick like Adeline and maybe just go into that aggro deck instead, that'd be fine. I did first um, pack open at a Danto Vanguard, so that would be a good wheel, for example. I mean, there's nothing wrong with just taking another Signet to follow up the first Signet, but hmm. I don't know. I don't know what I'm feeling like doing here. If we want to just play it safe, we take a fetch land. But maybe I just go with back-to-back -back signets and see what's passed along to us and go from there. I guess that's a fine plan as well. Into a third pick. There's a, another Tri-Land. Another Tri-Land. Dual Shock, rather. This pack actually does not look very good. I think Toxic Deluge might be the right choice in this particular pack. It's like that and Questing Beast is the two most powerful cards, and then maybe some lands afterwards. Okay to take the uh, the Toxic and see what happens. Okay, well, we just passed a Corpse Dance, too, so maybe Shallow Grave Reanimate Plan is something we could do. I mean, I said I've been doing a lot of Reanimator lately, but if we see some good signs like this, that could be a reasonable start. There's another Fetch Land here. There's a Chalice, which is pretty safe. Probe is also just always good. I guess we'll go with the Probe since that goes into any deck, and then we can see what happens on the wheel and get a better idea from there. Take the probe. Ooh. Strip mine, upheaval, winter orb, all in the same pack here is kind of spicy. Wow. I haven't done a great strip mine deck yet, but we could take it. Um, I don't expect Ren and Six to wheel, though. Hmm. That's tempting. I mean, with double signet, upheaval's also real good. Yeah, maybe we can build a fun upheaval deck. Well, I say fun, but it would be fun for me and not the opponent. So now that I've taken Upheaval, I think taking things like Ignoble Hierarch get a lot better. Um, and especially if seeing if you're seeing a Mana Dork this late as well, I think that's a decent sign that green could be open. Passing a Brazen Borrower here, but yeah, let's go maybe blue-green Upheaval type of start. We'll take like a Gilded Drake for the sideboard over, what, Tryland and nothing. That seems all right. Actually, hmm. Now that I think about it, if we end up wheeling that Corpse Dance and the uh, Shallow Grave, then the Reanimator plan is also still super tempting, isn't it? Ooh, wow. Ulamog now, too. So this is one of the Eldrazi that you can, or one of the fatties that you can Shallow Grave or Corpse Dance. So I think we want to do that and see if they wheel. <laughs> we did wheel the Adanto Vanguard. I think I like Thirst over Pack Rat. Life from the Loam, had I taken the Strip Mine, was available. Uh, I think this might have been the Corpse Dance pack, but we're getting the Marsh Flats back awkwardly. Okay. There's Oh, no, no, no. There is. Okay, so Corpse Dance and then Shallow Grave might be next. Wow, did we just get there? We might have. If this is the end result, I'm probably going to end up cutting the Ignoble Hierarch. And the Upheaval doesn't make as much sense in... The reanimate style deck. I know there was an Iona that I passed as well a little bit earlier, so 
there's a possibility that we get Iona as just a good reanimate target um, if we can get one of the prolonged reanimate effects instead of the single turn reanimate effects. Okay, so this was Shallow Grave, right? So somebody did take Shallow Grave. That's not too surprising. I'm going to take Thespian Stage in case we end up getting Dark Depths. We're also playing Black right now, so picking up Dark Depths and like Vampire Hex Mage would be pretty solid. Still have a bunch of different directions we can go. There's the Iona, okay. Oh man, Kaito is also really freaking good for the reanimate style decks though. In fact, even though Iona is a really good reanimate target, she's one of a ton of replaceable top-end cards, whereas Kaito is a card selection machine, so that probably makes more sense. Okay, I think first pack went well. We could have went a bunch of different directions, but <laughs> uh, you can even Umazawa and Ninjutsu and stuff like Ulamog, kind of funny. You wouldn't get the attack triggers, but that is something viable. I've never actually seen um, Umazawa go off. Anyways, go into pack number two. Got a couple of good opens here. The most powerful among them probably just going to be the Underground Sea. Mana Leak's always good. Mystical Tutor can grab, like, Corpse Dance and a few other things. I think this has got to be Underground Sea, though, especially since we already have Flats. You could also just kind of dump the Black cards here and take Rafelos to go with the Upheaval. But it feels like we have a pretty good start to this graveyard theme, so I'm going to do that. And wow, we got past a Mox Pearl... Sphinx of the Steel Wind, another Ulamog, Polluted Delta, Day... I mean, this is just a very good pack. Usually when you get past something like a Mox, um, that means somebody else opened another Mox or a different power, you know? So this happens occasionally. You're always happy when it does. There's Survival of the Fittest. We could still do that kind of reanimate style thing too. Narset looks decent here. Ashen Rider is another really good uh, reanimate target. Riftwing is just a solid card overall. Hmm. I kind of like taking the Narset. I expect a lot of these cards that we would otherwise want to wheel anyways. So let's do that. Another really solid pack here. Jace, Vamp Tutor, Ashiok. If we're going to go this more combo-oriented route, the Vamp Tutor is way too important. Good pack, though, for sure. Man, even two Sultai duels, Smuggler's Copter, lots of choices here. Force of Negation, Vampiric Tutor. Force is another one of those really, really strong cards in the format. But man, I kind of want to just take the Mana Dork. Because I haven't gotten anything but the Corpse Dance. Oh, this is going to be weird. Maybe we're going to go like some Sultai combo plus Upheaval deck. Grim Monolith now? Okay. That's another really good one with Upheaval. Plus it lets us potentially like hard cast the Ulamog too. This is turning into something. I don't know if it's going to be good, but it's turning into something. Because right now the all of the black except for the Tutor has one basic game plan. I wonder if the, at the end of the day I'm going to regret not taking the uh, the um, Rafelos. I guess we'll see. There's the Hex Mage I was talking about earlier. Coma looks juicy. Snapcaster Mage looks okay. Some other okay black cards. Hmm. Feels like Snapcaster is probably best choice for now. Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of a waffle all over the place. Basalt Monolith. Over nothing. Okay, some more fast mana. So, yeah, even if uh, we end up in some weird reanimate style deck, looks like the upheaval is going to be okay here. And now we're getting a potential valuable Mishra's Workshop. We've just picked up now four artifacts, so that's a possibility. 
There's Sphinx of the Steel Wind. There's Bolas's Citadel too. I'm gonna take the Citadel in the off chance that we end up getting like Tinker in pack three. Cause that's really, really good as well. Ashen Rider for the reanimate plan again. Ashiok on the wheel. Okay. Well, another stupid planeswalker. Maybe we're just gonna do like Sultai value. Brain Freeze, Walking Ballista. Sideboard Ballista for like a creature deck seems fine. And last couple pickups don't matter here. Oh, maybe the X Mage. Maybe. Black Lotus are open for pack number three. Okay, that is a card that does stuff. Any deck that has a Black Lotus can probably win a few games, right? Actually, we have the possibility of hard casting a turn one Bolas' Citadel. Like turn one, land, pearl, monolith, lotus, citadel. Passing a Zagoth Triome here. I mean, the more I look at it, the more like green is just not even a thing, right? But I really need to get some more reanimate effects if we're going to do this. Oh, there's the Tinker! Hold up, hold up, hold up. That also might have just saved the, the draft as I pass an Emrakul. But I took the Citadel, so Tinker is fantastic. Okay. We might be able to brew something out of this now. And you know what? I think because we just took the Tinker, I'm actually supposed to take Sundering Titan as another decent uh, Tinker target. Because sometimes you're not going to want to get Citadel. And in fact, the Citadel is not even good in this deck. <laughs> it's a good Tinker target, but it's not a good card otherwise in our deck. So that's kind of funny, sure. Demonic Tutor, wow, 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 wow. Could I have actually ended up in Random Storm? I could have. I think it's too late now. We're going to end up with some really, really weird deck that's not actually good, but just has a bunch of powerful cards in it, and I'm all for that. Ponder versus Coalition Relic. I Oh, there's Entomb here, too. That's sick. Hmm. Because I don't have that many early artifacts to tinker away. I just have a few. Ah, Ponder is so good. But I only have Corpse Dance, so I don't think we're supposed to take Entomb. I mean, I guess I have two tutors. Oh, okay, I'll take the Entomb. I hope we get one more good reanimate effect. Thank you. Right on call, we picked up Exhum. Okay. Now our deck is actually doing something. I did just have to pass a blue-black land there. But I think we have a realistic shot of winning some games. Could even play Inferno Titan as another random reanimate target. Overtaking Repeal, but I guess Una's Prowler now makes sense. We have Putrid Imp and Prowler. Let's see, that was pick seven. There's a chance I could still get reanimate or animate dead. Those aren't out of the question. Um, workshop's not going to make the deck. This is such a strange deck. Weird draft for sure. Let's see. Oh, I guess I have too many playables right now, don't I? Oh, no, no, no. The Mox and the Lotus are counting as lands, so... Actually, we have just about, just about enough playables. Echo of Eons is a card we could also Entomb for, but I don't know if draw 7 is right in this deck. Revoker's a decent 2-drop that we can tinker away. Is Corpse Dance good enough? Or, sorry, not Corpse Dance. Is Snapcaster Mage good enough here? Probably. Sadly, Blightsteel Colossus is... Oh, no, it's a good Tinker target. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Okay. I was going to say, uh, Colossus, you can't reanimate, but you can Tinker for it. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I think I'm cutting the upheaval. Let's see. If we cut all of our mana sources, we're 25, so maybe just cut, like, Toxic from the main. Did we get there? This is going to be a strange Tinker reanimate deck. 
but with demonic tutor, vampiric tutor, and now maybe even imperial seal. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, we can do some really fun stuff. I'm going to cut the thirst then as well and just go cut a lot of the interaction and just go all in on our game plan. This is definitely more of a combo deck. So Ulamog is for specifically Corpse Dance. But then any of these other cards are pretty solid. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Wait. Ulamog specifically Corpse Dance. Blightsteel specifically Tinker. And then Sundering Titan and Ashen Rider are good with any of them. Um, we're not playing any of those. I passed a Makeshift Mannequin kind of late, which would have worked with Ulamog too. But I think having Exum with Double Tutor... And the Snapcaster is good enough. I think the most out of place card in this deck is probably Ashiok. Sideboard Shriekma is also great. Although there will be times where. So. I guess Citadel is kind of awkward too, since we picked up the Blightsteel Colossus, isn't it? Like, usually it's just going to be right to tinker for Colossus. And then just hope to win the game on the spot there. I don't know. It looks like a fun deck. Hopefully we have some good draws. We're just going to add the Flats, the Sea, the Lotus, and the Pearl as lands. And then run the rest like such, I think. Seven five seven eight nine. Yeah, that looks good. Go like this and submit for round one here of this weird vintage cube draft. Let's go. All right, here we are for round one of the vintage cube. <laughs> On the draw with a hand that is not even remotely close to keepable. Into a hand that is also pretty darn bad. Hmm. I guess this one we'll keep. We'll pitch the Sundering Titan. And we might be just looking for, like, Tinker with this. This would be a turn four Tinker, though. Putrid Imp. Okay, I'm actually going to lead on the Putrid Imp and see one more draw step before we decide if we want to Imperial... or what we want to Imperial Seal for. We could have just went for, like, Black Lotus and went for turn two Ashiok, but I'm not sure that's right. Pearl. Oh, okay, well. That... Hmm, actually. So I could either go turn two Ashiok here, or I could go Imperial Seal for Tinker, and then Tinker next turn now. But I'm guessing getting the Planeswalker online is probably correct. Force of Negation, Pitching, Time Twister. Okay, I don't mind that. One less counter to worry about. Pitching Treasure Cruise and missing a land drop. All right. Let's go flats, fetch the C, Signet, and Imperial Seal for Tinker, I guess. Could also just hard cast Citadel here, too. Basically, but yeah, we'll grab the Tinker. If they have another counter in their hand, that's going to really suck. I was just psyched. Hmm, the fact that they didn't main phase cycle the Shark Typhoon also tells me it is kind of likely that they do have another counter. That's bad. I guess I'm going to try to lead with Basalt Monolith and see what they do. And then I'm just going to pass if they don't counter this. Mm. 
<laughs> they have to be thinking, wait, what? They just tutored for a card, and now they're playing Basalt Monolith. What does that mean? It's a me. Remand. Oh, okay. That wasn't that bad then. Glad I led with the Basalt Monolith. So they can flip Jace here. I don't think Blightsteel Colossus is actually the correct grab, though. It might be correct to just... Well, Sundering Titan's not even that... Yeah, it might be correct to just go and grab our... Uh, Bolas's Citadel, assuming Tinker resolves. All right, let's try again. Mana drain. Okay, well now we can go for it. See if they have another counter. I'll answer their question in a second here. Ah, I'm pretty sure getting Colossus... I mean, it's high risk, high reward, right? If they have any of the, like, treachery type cards, we're going to instantly lose. I feel like Citadel might be better, but we could just brick on Citadel. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> we hit Ulamog right off the top. <laughs> Uh, that's our uh, garbage. Wait, why can't I see their chat anymore? What is going on here? Time warp, okay. Oh, they can take multiple turns. But that, that means they just need to dig for something, though. Oh, that's right! The Jace can shrink the Blight Steel so that it's not a one-shot clock. They are just on mono blue hard control, man. Mana drain, remand, treasure. Sorry, mana drain, remand, force of negation. I don't actually like Time Twister in that style of deck. I'm sure they have a lot of other ways to utilize it, but when you counter all of your opponent's spells and then refuel them, it's oftentimes awkward. It is good with Time Warp, though. Any extra turn effects are nice with. Yep, here we go. So take an extra turn. Sheldock Isle will be active now. Blue must have been super open during their draft. Yeah, if they're shrinking the imp, then they probably do have a bounce or treachery or something underneath that. Damn, we had Entomb into Exhum, but we can't, uh, can't Exhum instant speed. Narset? <sighs> I have to imagine I'm dead here, but let's go ahead and Narset, I guess. Go to one. So ideally, it's not a treachery underneath. But if it is, nothing we can do about that anyways. Ah, Mystic Confluence. All right. 
and I cannot uh, I cannot pay six sure all right let's see what's underneath the shell doc if it's just like a, even a brazen borrower we're dead actually it could be any creature because putrid imp can't block with the threshold Oh, really? They have Dig Through Time as the last card in their hand? That's insane. Wow, their draw was great. That's what it looks like. Yeah, Dig Through Time incoming. Good beats. Well, this is a miserable matchup without having discard effects. We're going to have to bring in the Mesmic Fiend for sure. Looks like Workshop could also be okay versus them. Gix could also just be okay as a random creature that can draw cards. Put some kind of presence on the board. Sower of Temptation. Alright, so we do want to discard Ulamog here to reshuffle our graveyard. Because if we draw Sundering Titan, we just instantly lose. All right. Drawing land also works. GG's. Seems like a poor matchup, potentially. Let's get that Fiend in. I think we want the Gix. Probably don't need Basalty. Mm. I mean, if we tinker early enough, they can't bounce Colossus without having five mana, I suppose. I guess Sundering Titan's pretty weak versus specifically Mono Blue. All right, let's go to game two here. Oh, this hand is so close. I think it's a keep because we have multiple tutors in the deck. We only need to find one like good creature that is reanimatable. If we just hit like Ashen Rider, that'd be fantastic. And we even get to probe on the turn that we want to go off to make sure the coast could be clear. Okay. This might be a hard cast Bolas's Citadel type plan. All right, well, nothing to do yet, so we'll just sit back and wait. Ah, this favors them. I really needed something to do a little bit earlier. Okay, well, let's check the coast and see if it's clear. Would reckon it's probably not. Days, Remand. Ah, they do have Force of Negation here. Okay. So I don't want to give them a free turn to counter, so I'm not going to cast anything. What I can do is go for Ulamog. Um, discard Ulamog, end of turn, and then go for Corpse Dance. And then they can remand it. Ah, this is a miserable matchup. Too many counters. I can't buy it back either because then I let them daze, so. Corpse Dance, they can go for the Remand here. Yep, 
That's fine. We still get to keep our corpse dance. I cannot hard cast. Um, cannot hard cast here. Let's see if we can force them to force this. They didn't. Well, I can just grab Mesmeric Fiend now if I want to. Actually, no, no, let's grab Gix. They can't force the Gix, they can't daze it. I get to attack and start drawing extra cards. We brought this from the sideboard for a reason. Yeah, that seems good. Maybe we can just overload them. All right, pass. They have Confluence, Force, Days, Open. Go to combat. We hope they're just bouncing here with Mystic Confluence. And then drawing a card. Oh, they're going to draw two cards and just bounce Gix. Okay. Um, well, now would be the time to try to resolve something and force them to force here. But I guess they have eight cards in their hand, so maybe it's just Signet into Gix this turn instead. They're pretty close to Sheldock Isle activation. We can actually activate the Gix here too, which is kind of funny. Was this Metamorph? This looks like Metamorph, okay. Sure. Grim Monolith. Kind of want to just activate Gix. Um, I guess what we can do here is instead give our imp flying. Attack for one and draw a card, see what we find, and then go from there. That's not awful, most likely. I mean, is this even good versus them? Probably not, right? Because we just hit a bunch of like random counter garbage. Yeah, let's try to resolve Narset then.
All right, they are going to force their pitching treasure cruise. You got it. Now let's just pass. They can't dig through time end of turn, thankfully. So days, dig through time, bunch of unknowns. Sower of Temptation. They take the Gix and then they can sack the Gix. That's pretty awkward. I think I need to Corpse Dance it back if they attack. Yeah. I think this is right. I don't want them drawing extra cards. That's also pretty bad for us. Now we go upkeep vamp. And I guess we just grab Tinker again. Oh, wait, the Citadel's in my graveyard, isn't it? Shoot. So I'd have to like tinker for Colossus? Oh, that's not even good. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, that's really bad. That might be my only chance though, realistically. Looking at it, I feel like that's probably our only chance. We're way far behind, obviously. Oh, maybe they just have Mana Drain anyways. What is this? Different three mana spell. Oh, maybe they just dig through time in response. Yeah, okay. Uh, turn eight, Tinker for Blightsteel Colossus. A lot less exciting, huh? But it is what it is. I don't have any other option. Feels like their deck just folds to any um, random aggro deck, but it's a really good matchup for them versus me. Since I'm trying to resolve specific spells or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I assume I'm dead here. Time warp, okay. What's underneath the shell dock? Yorian Flicker Sower. All right, GG's. Good beats. Yep, so, man, if we had built any aggro deck, I think they just easily fold, but versus combo specifically, we get absolutely dominated. Let's go to second round. All right, on to round two of the Vintage Cube. Let's hope we can play against a non-control deck like that last one. Really, really rock, paper, scissors right there, though. Like, we crush aggro, I think... Um, get crushed by the control, control gets crushed by the aggro. <laughs> On the play with a pretty weak looking hand. Jeez, all these hands are really bad, aren't they? Yikes. The carrots! Um, I guess I keep this and we pitch the citadel. We have so many tutor effects in our deck that we could draw. Hopefully we can... Like, if we just rip Tinker off the top, for example, that's a turn one Blight Steel. Nice! Okay, this is this is the matchup we wanted, the aggro deck. Can we get there? So let's attack for one. Kaito, draw a card. Oh, no! <laughs> 
that's like our worst possible draw. But we can discard that to Putrid Imp to get it back into our deck. Uh, that's funny. We can also just discard it to Kaito, I guess. Hey, that's not cool. They blew up my pearl. Come on, deck. We have so many good draws. Come on. Um, yeah, let's just attack for one. We don't necessarily want to discard here. Ashiok. Well, the nice thing about these Planeswalkers is they're probably going to soak up a bunch of damage. So Ashiok 8, Abbot, Conscripts, and a land. Magda, sure. All right, they're going to attack the Ashiok. I can actually minus two Ashiok to get Abbott to look at an extra card if we want to. But I'm guessing it's better just to keep upticking. Land, land, chain lightning. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and attack. So I don't have to discard. If we draw a land next turn and can resolve Sundering Titan versus a Mana Screwed opponent, that's probably good as well. Although the awkward thing is I'd have to blow up two of my own lands to do this. Oh, this is the Rock, Paper, Scissors at its finest. Oh, they might kill Kaito here. Okay, they're going to kill Kaito here instead of Ashiok, it looks like, by leveling up the figure. Maybe? Yep, I'm okay with this. Planeswalker down. Okay. Imperial Seal. So, what I can do here is minus five to get Zealous to add extra mana. That's probably my best play. Um... Oh, man, I forgot. If I Sundering Titan, I have to blow up two of my own lands. Maybe that's not even good. Oh, 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 you know what we can do here? No, no, no. So, here's a better play. I can actually discard Blightsteel Colossus. Here we go. This is a good play. Then cast Imperial Seal for Tinker. Then we minus two Ashiok for Abbot of Kerke or whatever it's called, Carol Keep. Then we get to cast the Tinker here. And go get our Blightsteel Colossus. Awesome. Roundabout way of drawing the card immediately, kind of nice. And we can even play Una's Prowler out for good measure. The best part about this is we know that their Zealous Conscripts is already gone, so they don't have that out. Seems like a pretty good spot versus Mono Red. What other ways can Mono Red deal with this? Uh... Because they can only block Colossus realistically once. Oh, a GTA. Oh, that's not bad. I don't think that's good enough. Snapcaster Mage, that's so close. One more mana. Hit a Goblin Guide. Char, Sword of Fire, nice. OK. 
Okay, they're at nine infect. I don't think I'm supposed to Snapcaster Mage Imperial Seal, although it's not a terrible play. And if they don't ping Ashiok for at least one damage, then me playing out the conscripts is also game over. All right, oof. So this is the matchup we did want. Let's take the Citadel out, because reanimate or uh, tinkering any of these fatties or reanimating any of these fatties should be good enough. Thirst is going to be great here. They actually had a bunch of uh, equipment for Revoker, so we can probably leave that in. Narset looks bad. We can bring in Toxic. Maybe Monolith out for, like, Ballista is okay. Hexmage, Trespasser, even Shriekma are all okay, too, if we really wanted. I probably don't need Probe versus them so much. A 3-3 that can gain a bit of life is kind of annoying. Let's do that. All right, what do we have here? We have Garbage. This is way too slow, and it doesn't even do anything. Yeah, we'll mulligan down to six. This has potential. I need to find one of my better reanimate cards, but I'm going to pitch an island here. Because um, even just like turn three, Ashiok is oftentimes pretty good. Plus, we have the Trespasser, which is hard for them to, to deal without getting a lot of lost value. So I don't think we actually Putrid Imp on turn one without a way to, or without a fatty to discard. Otherwise, if I play this on one and they just kill it, then my exhum is terrible, you know? That was another fantastic draw, though I do take a little bit of damage. Let's go ahead and get that turn two Ashiok online. Kroxa, Goblin Guide, and a Magda Eaton. Battle display by Mox again, boo. Alright, if they're just playing it out, that's good. They might go face here. They might try to ignore Ashiok. It looks like not. Oh, this turn's gonna hurt. I'm gonna lose four life to cast Imperial Seal and go grab what? I guess Sundering Titan versus them. And then next turn, we're going to take two more and two more. We're really happy that they're attacking Ashiok and not face. Not that I think it's wrong for them to attack the Ashiok, but... Oh, they're going face now. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to die to burn at this rate. I might have made a mistake here. And I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. Trespasser conscripts. Alright, so if they have a bolt in their hand, I die. We are pot committed. <laughs> uh, what's the wording on this? It's not casting, it's just putting a card, okay. Let's see if we're dead. Oh, they didn't have any more targets for Heath. Okay. So you're saying there's a chance. So I think what I'm supposed to do here now is discard my Trespasser. And then take their Trespasser and eat my Trespasser to go up to four life. I 
and then definitely attacking. Put him on a two-turn clock here. Oh, so they had they also had Scrubland as a second hit for Heath, but we just happened to hit both. Wonky game. Bitter Blossom. I don't think that's going to do it. Can I put out Goblin Guide and win this turn? This doesn't have Menace, right? No, it's just Ward. Let's see. Goblin Guide, they go block, block, take three, take four. But that would make it so they cannot draw anything, right? Yeah, so it's correct to just Goblin Guide here. Oh, no, no, they do die. Because I can discard both cards to Putrid Imp to make it a 2-2. Uh, two -two, to enable the threshold. Oh, they're drawing Fire Blast! <laughs> no! Poor them. So they go Chump, Chump, take 4, and then Bitter Blossom finishes them off. Wonky, wonky game. And that'll do. All right. Rock, paper, scissors. We took the second round. Let's see if we can convert into a 2-1 in round three. Okay, on to the third and final round of this Vintage Cube draft. On the draw with a hand that has all of the wrong combo pieces. We'll go down to six. This one also does not have any of the correct combo pieces, but I'm not going to go down to five. We can pitch the Ulamog here. Um, because this one we cannot exhume, so I guess our dream is to just rip in Tomb or our Putrid Imp off the top. Mm, that's very bad. If I didn't Mulligan, I would just go to discard, but... Ah, we probably don't want to see a turn one island. If they're on another controly deck, that's going to be sad, sad, sad. Okay, that Kaito was a good draw. A third land would be nice. Kaito up to tick, discard one of these. Oh, pfft. So that turns off. Well, we can still discard a card with Kaito. Man. I mean, now Tinker is live too with any land draw. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, these draws, I tell you, they are. Come on. We have like Lotus in our deck too. Have we even drawn that card once? We've seen Pearl a few times, but I don't think we've drawn our Black Lotus at all. This is hilarious. Coercive portal, sure. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, how do I want to lead on? I think we're going to lead on Kaito. I don't even know if they should bother countering this because of Narset on the battlefield. Oh, they have a spell queller. That's fine. That's much better than than them uh, eating my Tinker, I will say that. Power Stone, two blue, open. Okay, land is good. Let's go for Monolith. I think I'm going to go ahead and sack the Monolith 
And if they have the counter, so be it. Yep. All right. Well, that sucks. Two different matches versus control decks is really not where we wanted to be with this deck, but sometimes that's the way the pairings go. Not much you can do about it. That's pretty funny, though. That's pretty funny. We only had one more fatty left in our deck. So I can still technically survive if we draw one of our discard effects for Ashen Rider to exile the Ulamog. Oh, well, that'll take care of that. All right, uh, that was not fun. In fact, both matches one and three here are seemingly going to suck. Uh, all right, Mesmeric Fiend comes in, Gix can come in. That is just brutal. I can take the Monolith out again. I mean, we just missed some land drops. What are you going to do? I guess the Snapcaster is like medium. Just give me one game where we have Lotus Tinker in our opener and we just get to go popping off. Uh, actually, no. Gix didn't seem as good versus them. Okay. Game two of the third round. <sighs> Another garbage hand. Could vamp tutor for like Lotus so that I could Kaito on turn two. And start looting. Uh, this would be an okay keep, but I think I'm going to try to high roll. Oh, wait, look at that. Turn one in tomb, turn two exhume. That's perfect. Okay. That looks like a busted opener for sure. So, they could still have some of the cheap counter magic, but if they don't, we are just going to wreck them. And this is just going to be grabbing Ashen Rider. <laughs> are you kidding? Uh, oh, wait, no, 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 this works. This works. <laughs> I'll have the Entomb and the creature in the graveyard, so this is fine. <laughs> they can't hit both. They can only hit the Entomb, but not the Ashen Rider. Oh, my gosh. Oy, oy, oy. Uh, we could just hit the Relic if we wanted to, but I think the land makes more sense here, right? Because the 5-5 five, five hopefully just wins the game on its own. Now, they could have any number of white removal spells just to pop this off, but we have them on a pretty quick clock, and we also have Demonic Tutor to go hopefully grab something fancy after. In fact, I don't even know what we want to grab, so I think I'm just going to play out the Prowler now that we've drawn that for extra air pressure. They probably have to cycle off their Relic, right? Oh, no, they didn't. Maybe go grab Mesmeric Fiend? I mean, that doesn't seem that great. Hey, it worked out. All right. We did it. We did the thing one game. Ugh. Let's go to game three. Black Lotus, where are you? Where are you, Lotus? Is this hand good enough versus them? No, I don't think it is. I think, again, we just try to high roll. Lotus! Yes! Uh, it does nothing. Um, I guess we're going to put the Ashen Rider in our deck, because we can just entomb whatever. Okay, okay, hold up. Hold up. We can Ashen Rider them turn one again if we want to.
black imperial seal. Get the exhume. Probe. What did they have? Hand was no good. All right, we did it. Exhume, or Entomb, rather. Ashen Rider. Exhume. Beautiful. All right. Yes. Yes. There's the turn one we were hoping for. And they don't have anything going on for quite a while, so... I am feeling vindicated. Oh, we even get to Ashiok turn three? How nice. So they're not dead next turn because they can discard some cards to the Prowler, but... Obviously our draw this game was pretty good. So they need to draw a fast mana source for Wrath, and then even if they do Wrath, yeah. We have Ashiok sitting on the battlefield. All right, I feel okay about that now. We got absolutely demolished round one. Terrible matchup for us, and our opponent had a sweet mono blue deck. But uh, we got there in rounds two and three. So interesting little draft. We had like a half and half deck, but in the end got some good value back and even got to play Lotus out in that final game. So happy about that. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to check out all my other content here on the Card Kingdom YouTube channel, and we'll see you back next week for some more. Bye-bye.